What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the St. Thomas Dynasty here on NCAA 14. This is John Jay Gaming on the mic, and today we are playing against our new in-state rivals in the Minnesota Golden Gophers at their house, TCF Bank Stadium. Go try to win the very first game of this rivalry, man, so you're going to want to buckle up. It's going to be a great one. Make sure you smash that like button as well as subscribe if you have to be new. Let's go ahead and hop into this game, man. Let's get it. So intro aside, it is time to finally get things underway as Jesus Sutterworths is going to take the kickoff. He's got some decent blocks to work with. He's down the sideline and he is forced out of bounds at the 45. And here comes our star running back in Lucas Coley. He had a heck of a game this time around. We're going to have to get him involved once again if we're going to find success as they actually key in on him early. But Noah Brooks has a little speed on him too. He's able to keep it for a gain of five. And now Brooks dropping back. We're trying to get it to Isaiah Thomas, but it looks like he was tripped up. Surprised that it wasn't called pass interference on that play, but I digress. We got this third down that we have to focus in on. As third and five. Going to try to get it to Tristan Singleton. He barely gets there. But does get awarded with the first down anyways. And now we're back at it again. First and ten. This time going to Isaiah Thomas. He makes the catch for a gain of seven. It's not looking too terribly pretty early on. Not many big plays. But doing just enough to keep the drive alive. Minnesota is considered a much better team on paper, so what we got to do is control that time of possession. And if we can do that and put points on the board at the same time, we will definitely have a good formula for winning. As now, Brooks of the middle taking it up for seven yards. He does take a shot from two gopher defenders, but bounce right back up. He's a pretty tough kid, but so is Lucas Coley as he picks up a gain of five. Another first down this drive already you know close to you know that four minute mark as Alan Keneally gets into the end zone he gets brought down at the last second and we're in a pretty good spot man however third and goal we're in danger of having to settle for a field goal Brooks read option he's in there touchdown Tommy's and the St. Thomas football team will strike first in his ball game. Your Tommies have a 7-0 lead. And at the same time, we're already halfway through this first quarter. So that is definitely a great way to start. As now, here comes the Gophers. Going up the middle to their wide receiver in Mike White. Picking up 18 yards on the play. A first and 10 coming up here. As now, they try to throw it again to the right-hand side. But it's a little off target. And now they got a third and 12 to work with all of a sudden. Might have to, you know, settle for a punt. As we laid down the lumber on John Bentley. They got to settle for that punt, man. However, we do go free now on our next possession. So that means we have to, uh, the defense definitely got to step up, man, for sure. As now the Minnesota Gophers are back on the field. Their offense ready to make this a 7-7 game. As Robinson is on the outside, we're able to finally bring him down. But now Minnesota is in the red zone. Inside the 20 for the first time today, they are looking to get on the board. As they might do just that as Jared Scott can't get there in time. It's going to be a touchdown for the Gophers even with the penalty. It's an offside on us, so the touchdown will still count, as that's how this first quarter is going to play out. We got ourselves a tie ball game at 7, a defensive struggle, if I say so myself. So welcome back, guys, to the second quarter of this ball game. Here comes the St. Thomas offense. Noah Brooks is set to drop back the pass. Going to try to throw it to Isaiah Thomas, but did not see the safety come down. Yeah, we picked that pass off. Simply got to make better decisions than that. As now, Brooks in the shotgun, third and eight. Got to make a play, and we make it happen. Tyreek Miller with a gain of 26 on the play. As now, we are able to keep the drive alive. Brooks is going to keep it up the right-hand side. 
You know, just got to get him with the ground and pound. You know, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. As now, second and four. Going to get it to Jamie Smith. He's wide open, but gets out of bounds immediately. Could have gotten a few more yards, but just, you know, couldn't cut up field in time due to momentum. As we go to Alex Garcia, he drops a pass. It's incomplete. Facing a second and ten now. As we'll go to Lucas Coley. He takes it up the middle. He picks up five. A decent run for our star tailback. As we'll have to, uh, got to make something shake here, man. Definitely don't want to settle for a field goal. I like what I see on that right-hand side. So we're going to go with Isaiah Thomas. And we get what we want as we get into the end zone. Touchdown, Tommies. Isaiah Thomas, man, makes us a 14-7 game. Let's see if we can do the same to the Minnesota's defense. Can we get another stop? Harrison will drop back the pass to start this drive. They'll go directly over the middle to the tight end. Left open, having to deal with only the safeties. That is a mismatch if you look at that size, and they exploit it there. As now, first and ten. Another quick throw, this time to Mike White. That goes for a gain of eight. Golderfers moving down the field with efficiency. As here comes Eli Shalgan, the St. Thomas transfer. Who gets stripped away? Dale Garrison gets the fumble. As Eli Shalgan, he's been pretty quiet so far in this game. When he finally breaks it, forgets about the ball security. St. Thomas is going to have the football back. So now, first and ten. Don't like what I necessarily see on the read option. Going to go ahead and uh, audible. Just give it a straight run to Lucas Coley. Going to show him how ball security really is as he's in the traffic of the Minnesota defense. Picking up 8 yards and he's a little quiet too man. Only 30 yards off of 11 carries. It's been a slow day for Lucas Coley as Minnesota has done a good job of keying in on him as well. Only 2.9 yards per carry. But Noah Brooks man, he's putting in that work though. What a dart to Isaiah Thomas able to pick up 16 on the play. And it's a fresh set of downs for the Tommies as we'll go play action. Going over the middle. Finding Tyreek Miller. Going for a gain of 13 on that play. Another first down for this Tommies offense. As we look to make this a 21-7 game. As we try to throw to Alex Garcia. It's incomplete. But we're not going to lose confidence in our receiver, man. Going to go to him once again in double coverage. Doesn't matter, though. He gets up and makes the grab. Got to put the faith in your guys every once in a while. As now, first and ten. Brooks going with the read option. He gets it near the goal line inside the five-yard line now. We're in a perfect position to make this a two-score game. And we'll do just that as Damian Hudson the third gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Tommies. Your St. Thomas football team. Having a 21-7 lead right now. Definitely looking commanding. As now, let's see if we can get one more good play from our squad in this first half. Or at least one good stop, I should say, as Carlos Robinson gets a huge gain. You know, just uh, that cutback cheese. You know, just couldn't get pressure on the quarterback that time around. But for in two, though, there's another throw. Another case where we just couldn't get enough pressure on this QB, man. Dude had all day to throw. He took advantage of it. And now we'll try to supplement that with a blitz. It doesn't work out for us whatsoever as Mike White beats us in coverage. Gain of 30 yards. And now suddenly Minnesota gets into the end zone. Adam Thompson with the score. And they cut this thing down to a one possession ball game. But St. Thomas still has time. On the clock here, we can make this a two-score game before we go into the locker room. As it gets batted away by, looks like one of the D DBs. You don't see that very often where it's straight up batted at the line of scrimmage. But it is that time though, as Tyreek Miller does get into the open and pick up the first down. Keeping things rolling pretty well. Brooks is looking pretty good. He's going to get to Tyreek Miller once again. We're at midfield. So after that first timeout, we are back here on the field, man. Let's see if we can make something shake. We do throw it short to Isaiah Thomas, who does immediately go out of bounds. Save us some time for sure as it stops the clock. As we'll go over the middle, finding Tristan Singleton. 
who hangs on and makes the catch. And moving the ball down the field well with efficiency. Just got to keep up the good work as we throw it behind our target this time. Incomplete pass. But now, second and ten. Brooks dropping back. Throwing it to Isaiah Thomas. A diving grab by the senior wide receiver with NFL uh, aspirations. As there's Isaiah Thomas again with another first and goal. With a nice 15-yard gain on that one. But can we get into the end zone here? No, we don't. We get stuffed by the one-yard line monster. Going to have to go ahead and take a timeout here and see if we can make something shake here. Only oh, need one more yard. Can we make it happen? No, we can't. And we will have to settle for a field goal, unfortunately. But we're feeling pretty good regardless, though, as we go into halftime with a 24-14 lead. St. Thomas, I believe, actually, we got to kick it off to Minnesota, but we're looking pretty good regardless. So now, here we go, picking things up, you know, a couple plays into the second half. It's already a third and six for the Gophers, as Harrison's going to scramble out of the pocket and able to pick up the first down as Jim Smith is able to finally get in there and make the tackle. Next play, tight end goes into motion, Eli Sh Shanigan. Gets into the uh, <laughs> gets into open field for the first time today. Doesn't fumble the ball, so good for him. Hasn't got much action as of late. Only six carries for 25 yards. We've been doing a really good job of keying in on this running game. As there it is once again, John Burke getting stuffed like a Oreo sandwich. As now St. Thomas takes the field again. Allen making a catch, getting us to the 40-yard line. Just doing what we need to do right now, man. Not looking like the little brother in the state of Minnesota right now. As This is, of course, the debut of the rivalry game here in the state of Minnesota, man. So, a big game for sure. And St. Thomas has definitely lived up to the expectations. As there's another 7-yard run of the gut. Going to try to get Lucas Coley more involved here. We just get some more read options and stuff, that kind of thing. As Noah Brooks does get open. 10-yard gain on that one. Keep that thing rolling. So now, next play. Lucas Coley getting ready to take the carry. He's going to take it up the left-hand side. Able to nearly pick up the first down all by himself. Following forward. That's what I love about this kid so much as a power back. He's always following forward. He does not get stuffed very often. He's the one running over people usually. As there's Jamie Smith taking his first carry of the day. Goes for 7 yards. As now, first and 10. Alex Garcia able to make the catch immediately off the slant pattern. Picking up 9 yards. Having a quiet day, but hey, able to make the catch that time. As now, second and 1. Lucas Coley able to get it up the field. Only a few more yards away from making this a free possession game. Just got to go ahead and execute right here. As we try to throw to Adrian Allen, it's incomplete. Should have been completed. Could have been a touchdown, but it simply was not in the cards for us that time, man. So now here we go. Third and goal. Noah Brooks in under center, ready to take the snap. Going to try to throw quickly over the middle, but it's intercepted. Oh, you hate to see it. That's our first turnover of the whole game, man. As Terrace Thomas was able to come up and make the play on that one. And now here comes Minnesota. Off of the interception, leaving some points on the board for sure. As they immediately pick up another first down, Jared Scott tries to strip the ball away. But that tight end is simply too strong to have the ball taken away from him. As now, first and ten. Eli going to take it up the right-hand side for St. Thomas transfer. Getting warmed up a little bit. A gain of 12. As now we're going to try to stuff him once again. They try to scramble with the quarterback. It actually works. Zach Bones going after Eli initially. Just wanted to lay down some lumber on their, on their former teammate. But forgot to play actual football as we nearly get beat deep. But it's thankfully incomplete. So now, thanks to that drop, we have third and one coming up here. 
Minnesota quarterback moving a slot receiver into motion. Let's see what happens here. Third and one. They get stuffed immediately on the speed option as it looks like Zach Bones makes up for his bad play. And St. Thomas back on the field once again. We still have an opportunity to take control here, man, as Jamie Smith going to pick it up off of the play action pass. We'll catch out of the backfield. Nice little gain as well. Love to see it. Next play, Lucas Coley going to get this man more involved. Going to find a little bit more space. Gets a few yards and the first down. Keeps the drive rolling with some efficiency as we'll go to Coley again. Off the halfback counter, the play breaks down a little bit. But stays patient, finds the hole though. As we do, are about to enter the final play of the third quarter. Going to try to get one more play off. Don't know why we decided to run, to be honest with you. Thought I saw something, but I actually didn't. As we go into the final quarter of play, we are up on the Minnesota Gophers from the Big Ten Conference, 24-14. Get your fours up, fellas. Let's see if we can finish this game off once and for all. Let's get it. All right, fellas. Welcome back to the final quarter of play. At least we hope. As third and eight, Brooks. Going over in the middle to find Alex Garcia. He's just barely misses the first down marker. Only one yard shy. But you already know what it is. We love to go for it around here. And it's no stranger here. Fourth and one. Brooks going up the middle to Coley. Able to pick up the first down. Keep turning those legs forward. As we now have an opportunity to get more time off the clock here, man. As Brooks... Trying to get it up to Isaiah Thomas, but it's nearly intercepted. Nearly left the door open for the Gophers, but thankfully it was dropped. So we can continue business as usual. And business as usual includes Isaiah Thomas picking up an 8-yard gain. He's been getting a lot of action today for sure. But now, 3rd and 2. Got a play action in the back pocket. Let's see if it works out for us. Brooks. Dropping back, going to find Adrian Allen, who gets lit up like a Christmas tree, but still is able to pick up the first down. And dare I say it, we're going to run the same play twice in a row. And this time it works as Isaiah Thomas gets behind the defense. Touchdown, Tommies! As Isaiah Thomas just runs right down the center of the field where no one else was. And your Tommies now hold a 31-14 lead. And now Minnesota needs to score on this drive to stay alive. Let's see what the Gophers can come up with as Eli Shaw again was left wide open. He could have gone for a touchdown if there wasn't two guys just happening to be there. You definitely hate to see that. It's now second and 12. It's another first down. This time to John Bentley. They're certainly not going to give up. They're going to fight to the last whistle. As now here comes Hairston. First and ten. He's lit up in the backfield. It looks like Jesus Shuttleworth able to get in there and make the tackle off that little blitz package. And it's a third and long now that they have to deal with. So now Hairston in the pocket going to get it up the field to Eli Shaw again. But doesn't get nearly enough yards for the first down. And they're going to have to go for it here. Otherwise, this game is essentially going to be over unless there's some minor miracle as Hairston going to the left-hand side. It's deflected away by Eli Ewing. And that's going to wrap things up here, man. After we got the ball, ran out the clock, took care of business, and we beat our in-state rivals by a final score of 31-14. to St. Thomas, thanks to this great victory, is able to improve to 2-0. In the start of Season 8, let's go get it, man. So checking out the scoring summary for today's game, man. And, you know, it was one of those games where we went back and forth initially. And then, you know, starting that second quarter, we started to pull away a little bit. And then second half, you know, offense couldn't really do too much, but didn't have to. Our defense was completely shut down. And you love it when we have another dominating performance, uh, uh, even against, you know, our in-state rival going 1-0 against them you love to see it checking out the stats for today's game though noah brooks once again went off and i gotta give it to this man this man had some doubters 
in this game or like coming into this season for sure and he has responded well another phenomenal performance of 329 yards three touchdowns and a pick you love to see that kind of performance brooks also got it done on the ground with 10 carries 51 yards and a score getting it done on the ground so did lucas cole today he had 23 carries for 92 yards you know, didn't get into the end zone, but was a powerful back in this game, man, for sure. He was much better than his counterpart, Eli Shalligan. He was held to just 10 carries for 40 yards, and he even fumbled the ball, which he did end up losing. The receiving core was anchored by Isaiah Thomas, who is an absolute stud for sure. 10 receptions, 126 yards, and 2 touchdowns. This man was an absolute baller out there on the field for for the man although uh, he wasn't the only person to get into the end zone damian hudson the third did get one of his first catches of his entire season actually it's a whole collegiate career he ha was able to get into the end zone but that was his only catch the entire game now this electric defense was anchored by some unusual guys jim smith and corey johnson led the team in tackles today with seven apiece although jared scott and billy ewing weren't too far behind we also got a couple of sacks today on the quarterback from unusual suspects. Mitchell McLaughlin in his first year on the field gets his first sack of the season. And so does Jesus Shuttleworth getting there to sack the quarterback as well. Finally, we did not get any interceptions in today's game, but we did force a fumble courtesy of Jared Scott stepping in to fill in that role that Billy Mitchell played last season. That fumble was recovered by Dale Griffin and it was a fumble that was forced on Eli Shalligan, so that has a little more, uh, well, makes it a little bit more special for us for sure, man, definitely. So next episode, we will actually make our debut in American Conference play. We will take on the UCF Golden Knights. They're currently 1-1 one one on the season. They have a ton of injuries, so, like, look at this. They have already three guys out for multiple weeks from this year. That is definitely brutal to deal with. But, you know, they, uh, they've been okay. They've only played Mountain West teams. We're definitely better than both those teams that UCF has played against. So we should take care of business against them. In the meantime, though, you know, I hope you guys are excited for the rest of Season 8 of the St. Thomas Dynasty. If you love the content here on this channel, man, I encourage you to smash that like button as well as subscribe if you happen to be new. This is John J. Gaming coming at you guys with some more college football gaming in the future. Take care, everybody.